Hello everyone, Kate Van Buskirk here, welcoming you back to the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon virtual speaker series. Today we are joined by a guest who has become a staple at our expo. Runners show up in huge numbers to hear him speak. He is the president and the founder of The Running Room, Mr. John Stanton. Hi John, how are you? Good morning Kate, great to join you this morning. Well, we're so thrilled you're able to come back and be part of our, again, our virtual speaker series again. I know that you spoke with Ben Kaplan around this time last year, and I think we all thought maybe that would be a one-off and we'd all be back in person. And yet here we are again on our Zoom screens, um, but we're really glad that you were able to join us. So thank you for that. Yeah, well, it'll be fun, I'm sure. So again, you joined us last year to talk about what was at that time a fairly new concept, which was, of course, virtual races. So mm -hmm. I'd love to start by maybe getting an update from you about what the last year has looked like from your perspective as we've all adjusted to this new normal. And maybe you can give us a sense of what you think some of the biggest challenges have been and maybe also some of the biggest lessons learned over the last year of the pandemic. Well, I think we've learned a lot. And, and one of the, I think the primary things, Kate, is the resiliency of runners. Uh, you know, runners by nature are resilient. We adapt to weather conditions, we adapt to uh, race course conditions, and we're, we're adaptable and we take what's thrown at us and make the best of it. And I, and I think over the past year, uh, runners have also done that. Although we're all getting a little frustrated with some of the COVID restrictions, we all have learned different ways to adjust it. And one of the ways is virtual races. You know, when virtual races first started, we were concerned as to how successful they would be. Would people uh, be interested in that? And would there be the same sense that we get from a, a real race by doing a virtual race? And certainly there's some pros and there's some cons. And, and the pros are that you get to choose your own weather conditions. You get to choose the day that you're going to run. Uh, you can strategically place people along the course that are in your cohort group that can cheer you on when it's vitally necessary. And you can have somebody at the, if you're running a 10K, you can have somebody at the 8K mark when you're starting to suck it up a little bit and you need that encouragement. Somebody can be there to cheer you on. And you can have people at the finish line. Uh, the cons are, you know, you don't get the excitement of the start line, the camaraderie that we all enjoy about race expos and the interaction with the other runners and this excitement that, to the build up to the race itself. The cheering crowds, of course, uh, you, you miss, you know, there's nothing like the sound of our names being called from the sidelines to inspire us to dig deeper. And we all know on race day, we can always run a little faster when we're because we're competitive by nature and you get out with other people, you know, there, there's that extra gear that you discover that's there. What we learn through virtual races is that you, you can learn to dig deep into that that extra gear and find it if you if you really focus on it. So I think there's there's a balance. There's some good parts to it. There's some negative parts to it. But you know the the I think runners have adapted to it. You know we all like the bling that we get from races and particularly those of us that are competing in the five and ten k and half and and marathons where sometimes it's a t-shirt or it's a medal that that you cherish so much is that becomes special to you because it's that not only the sense of accomplishment but it's it's that uh, reward that you can remind yourself of uh, something that you've done that's allowed you to go the extra mile for for yourself. So I think that we've learned that there is a place for virtual runs. And I think even into the future, there will be a place for virtual runs. You know, people who live in Northern Ontario or Northern Alberta, wherever you may be, where you're not into one of the big major cities and have an opportunity to, to run the waterfront marathon as an example. I mean, if, if somebody lives in Northern Ontario, it may not be practical for them to come down and run the marathon. Well, now they can do it virtually. And they can participate in it. They can get the t-shirt, they can get the medal, they can go online and experience some of the experiences that runners get uh, by doing virtual races. So right. I think as a runner, when we were positive by nature, so we can look at some of the positive impacts that have come out of it. And I think there's more positives than negatives. And although there's some negative things, and I think we all look forward to the day we can return to some sense of normality, we know the future will be slightly different. You know, the large expos will probably not be quite this large, <laughs> you know, or they're going to have to be mandated for social distancing and what have you. So there's a lot of things we have to figure out yet as we move forward. But runners are smart. They're adaptable. And we'll, we'll find a way to move forward uh, as we, we get through this pandemic. 
Mm -hmm. That's a great perspective. I really like what you said about, um, you know, this may be providing an opportunity. And I've heard this from other race directors about, in, in, you know, even if we are able to come back in big numbers in the future, maintaining that virtual option for folks who might not be able to get to, as you know, as you as you said in your point to Toronto or to some of these big cities for an actual in person marathon. And, um, you know, it's interesting how sometimes these challenges can also be opportunities where we yeah. didn't have to think about these things in the past. And now all of a sudden there's, you know, there's room for, for that growth to, to continue, which is pretty cool. Well, there is. Um, and, and, you know, the other thing, Kate, is that there, I think there's going to be another running boom. Uh, hmm. you know, I'm, I'm old enough. I've gone through the running booms. You know, I went through the running booms when we, we started, which was the late 70s, early 80s. And, and we saw the running boom there. And, and uh, you know, that was the era of Bill Rogers and Joan Benoit Samuelson and, and what have you. And they were our heroes in those days. And, and they inspired us to, to run. And there was a huge running boom at that time. I think we're about to enter another running boom because what we've seen is there's a whole battery of people who were into group exercise routines, who were not exercising. And you know, every health minister or, or health leader has recommended walking and running as a, as a good exercise throughout the pandemic. And if you go through communities throughout Canada, it doesn't matter whether you're in a small neighborhood community in, in rural Canada somewhere or in a major city, you're seeing people out running and walking and you're seeing a group of people that you didn't normally see before. And they're new runners, they're new walkers, they're people that are, have just taken up the sport. So there's, there's going to be an influx of those people to our sport, and they're going to enjoy the same things that we've all enjoyed, the camaraderie and the races and the competitiveness and, and all the things that inspire us to, to continue our running will inspire them too. They, they'll discover, you know, the, the sense of empowerment that comes from a run when you're feeling down and you need a run, you go for a run, you feel better. So, you know, that they're discovering what running truly is about. Absolutely. I know that you, uh, you know, runners come up and speak to you all the time. And you've been, as you said, in this sport for decades now. So I know that you've heard lots of stories and have many of your own. I'm wondering how many people have come up to you over the last year, maybe who, who have taken up running for the first time and what some of the things they're sharing with you have been. Well, I have. And, and, you know, the difference is that I used to run into these people at expos and I used to run into them, you know, on the floor at the stores across the country when I was visiting the stores or at races and what have you. But now, it, again, we've adapted. It's through social media type platforms. And it's either through, you know, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. People are asking questions. And, and the one thing is we're much more candid when we're on social media. <laughs> you know, sometimes people will ask you a question that, that they'd be a little cautious about coming up to somebody they don't know and asking them a question. Uh, they're, they're much more uh, inquisitive when they're, they're asking questions. And, and what I find is people are, seeking out and, and saying, you know, I need, need exercise. And I've heard that exercise is good because I've put on my COVID weight has gained. And everybody talks about that, that their, their COVID uh, weight scale has gone up. But they also say, you know, I hear it's also good for you mentally. And, and you know, as runners, we know that. We know that it's uh, the mental aspect to it, that if you're feeling down and discouraged and stressed out, you go for a run, all of a sudden think life becomes much more manageable. And, uh, and I think that that's what, what runners are discovering. And, and I think it, you're seeing it extra mentally across the country that people of all ages, you see families out, you see young families, mom and dad and kids on a bike and they're, they're out walking and they're out running and you're seeing it in the communities. And I think that's really good. That's, that's one of the benefits that has come from COVID is I think it's engaged and inspired a lot of people to take up an exercise program. Yeah, that is so exciting. And, and I agree, it's just been incredible. I live downtown Toronto and seeing the number of people out. And, you know, you can always tell that they're, a, well, you can often tell that they're a first time runner because they might not even have proper running shoes. And they're probably, you know, they're wearing the Rocky, the, the sweatshirt and the, the, the heavy cotton pants, but they're out there doing it. And, and I think a lot of people have stuck with it, which is really exciting. And, you know, from a business perspective, it must be exciting for you as well. I mean, the running room has provided um, great opportunities, both in terms of training, but then of course, you know, gear um, over so many years now. And 
I'm curious about how the, the business has adapted over the last year, especially, um, I guess, going on almost two years now. But since we spoke to you last year, what some of the changes have been um, at the running room from a business perspective? Because I know you've had to really shift and, and adapt as well. Well, we have. And, you know, like all businesses, we've had to adapt and our people have had to adapt. And and one thing we we learned right from the get-go when we were shut down, uh, you know, we were shut down and we had stores shut down all across Canada. One of the things we needed to do was made sure we had somebody responsible for those stores and in those stores. So we kept our very best people. And, and that's the number one decision we made. We kept our best people. Uh, then when we reopened, we reassessed the number of hours that we were open because we said, if we want the very best people, we're putting them under new work environment. We want to make sure they're energized and still inspired and still have a sense of accomplishment. So we closed on Monday and we said, we're going to give everybody a day off because retail was notorious for long hours and, and, and it was tough on individuals and on families. We limited our hours. We instead of being nine till nine kind of thing and, and being open all these extra hours, we really analyzed the, the market and said, let's let's open the hours that we're actually required to be open and, and maintain the relationship with our customer, but also put paramount the health and welfare of, of our group that's working with us because they're the our success. And without them, we're 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 not successful. So I, I think we changed and adapted. Uh, our run clubs, uh, you know, have been historically how we built our business was through our run clubs and through our clinics and the relationships we developed with our customers. Well, we can't have run clubs. It's just not practical under COVID to put people and gather 100 people inside a small running room store. You know, we used to do that, but you can't do that today. And, and it'll be a while till we can do it if we ever do it again. So we said, how do we adapt to that? Well, you know, let's use technology. And, and we said, let, let's, uh, you know, get groups going, but, you know, it'll be cohort groups where it'll be maybe to start with, it was family groups. We encourage people to get their family members out and go for a run or go for a walk with them. And then it was neighbors, get your neighborhood group to get together, or work group to get together. And then use social media that, you know, the people that you were relationships with who you ran in the run club and you know people said i miss my run club i just miss the connection with seeing all those people because it was this eclectic group of people that i met from a wide variety of backgrounds and i enjoyed that aspect to to my running career well what we did is we said well let's set up social media set up a facebook group and and a zoom group of some sort and then meet on wednesday night and say hey we're all going for 8k tonight and we're going to do an 8k run and you go for your 8K, I go for my 8K, and then we get back onto Zoom or Skype or, or FaceTime, and, and we talk and chat about how our run went and tell them bragging stories, and <laughs> tell our, our twisted ankle stories, whatever it is. Uh, we can share that. And, and so you, you maintain that social connection. And, and I think that it's that adaptability that I think is so very important. As runners, we learn that we can go from a walker to become a runner, to become a faster runner and continue to improve ourselves because we adapt our body to that, the rigors of training. And I think with COVID, we need to say the same thing. How do we adapt to it? Let's approach this as an athlete would. Let's approach it as you do. You grew up in a family that was athletic. You had a father that led your, your family and, and encouraged them and, and inspired them. We need to make sure that we do that within our social groups to be leaders and, and say, here, here's how we overcome it. And let's do this by thinking like an athlete and performing like an athlete. Great approach. Yes. And it's obviously worked really well. Now, you've also introduced through the running room a number of online resources. So I know that you now have the online coaching programs and the virtual running advisors. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about these resources, because I think, you know, it's first and foremost, exactly what you said about the connection is so important. But then, of course, people are, you know, whether you're a new runner or you maybe relied on the running room for years, you know, you started with them and you were, you've continued with them for years. The running room has really, you know, been a, a resource for people and folks need some direction and some coaching and some, you know, outside of just the motivation, sometimes they need the actual sort of practical pieces as well, which you're providing. Can you tell us more about some of those online resources too? Well, sure. Probably the most used is the, the running advisor because, 
you know, people come into the store and like you said, a lot of times I've had people come into the store and I'll say, Hey, how can I help you today? And, and I'm on the floor and they said, well, actually I, I'm not looking for anything. I just came in for a little motivation. Like, <laughs> I, I just haven't got the zest for training that I used to have. I need to talk to somebody about running. And sometimes it's just that interaction and talk to them about their training or their goals or what, you know, what, what they've been doing. So we have a run advisor who's exactly that they're an advisor. They can do a number of things. They can talk to you about and answer your training questions. They can direct you to a uh, running advisor, uh, can also direct you to a nutritionist if you're looking for some nutritional advice and just some broad-based nutritional advice. Or if you're looking for some physiotherapy, uh, direct you to a physiotherapist in your community. Uh, sports medicine doc, sometimes we, you know, we've had an injury that plagued us or you know, maybe they're, they're uh, uh, somebody who's diabetic and has some specific health issues that they need to talk to somebody about. We can give them some broad-based tips on that, or we can direct them to, to who to talk to regarding those things. The other thing is shoe fitting, you know, because sometimes people are saying, well, you know, I live in northern uh, Newfoundland outside of uh, St. John's uh, and I need to buy a pair of shoes. Can you tell me about how to, how to assess myself? And we can go through like we do in the store where we do an assessment of, of somebody and do a gait analysis. We can do it virtually for them and, and recommend the type of shoe that they need. And then they can go in and select it. They can go online and select it. Uh, you know, so we give them a, a lot of those options that are there. If they've never experienced a virtual race, we can explain to them what a virtual race is and how you participate in it and how you get interacted in it. So that's what they're there. They're runner advisors. And then we have the clinics, which are like we were doing in store, except we do them online. We use FaceTime and we're, we're interactive. We have a live session that we do uh, with the, the clinic. And then we, we also have the ability for you to communicate directly to the instructor afterwards. So in other words, we sit live and there may be 10 or 15 or 30 of us or 40 of us in the clinic. And there's some interaction there. But like in a, a real live clinic, you know, there's a lot of people that have questions, but they're not going to ask them in the clinic environment because they're too embarrassed. So they'll, they, but they, they will email the clinic instructor afterwards and say, I've got a question on hill training and here, here's my question, you know, how do I manage the, these hills and what have you? And the clinic instructor can get back to you. So I think using technology allows us to recreate as close as possible and in some ways enhance the experience that they did have in the clinic environment. You know, there, there's some things that they don't get. They don't get that social direct connection that we as humans like. I mean, humans by nature are social creatures. Uh, we miss that. But with FaceTime, you're at least there with people. You can see the reaction. You can interchange with them. So you have that component to it. And then you'd also have the added value of, of being able to directly communicate by email electronically with, with the uh, clinic instructor. Uh, we also have the ability to, to take uh, some of our, our, the best of the best. In other words, we can take a, an elite athlete who, who is uh, going to give them a talk on race day tips, or we can take a nutritionalist who understands sports nutrition and understands the the, the, the average runner, what their challenges are, and relate to them some information that will make their nutritional choices wiser and, and more intelligent in their training. So that, that's where we use technology, and, and we like to think we use it to the best our ability. That's really incredible. Again, it sort of sounds like one of these opportunities that presented itself during, you know, something, a, a, an unfortunate challenge that kind of created an opportunity. And um, I think the running room has always been well known as, uh, again, a resource that, that's broad based, right? So you, you're, you have specific advice about all the things you just described, but then to be able to kind of cover so many different topics um, is really important. And it, yeah, it sounds like the ability to communicate that has increased, which is pretty cool in some ways, even though you're maybe missing meeting up in, in person. There's, yeah, some great opportunities there. That's wonderful. Um, so as we mentioned, so many people took up running for the first time over the last year. And, you know, maybe for those who are listening in for the first time, or even if, you know, long, long, long standing runners who just need some reminder of this, why is there so much value in having a structured training plan and online coaching and this virtual community rather than just going out to try to do it on your own? I mean, you've, you've covered a few of those things in terms of the, the connections we have to one another, but what are some of the other main 
um, benefits to having that that structure. I think runners need structure. You know, runners by nature, most of us are a little obsessive compulsive, you know, for lack of a better word, because we are. We, we get into our sport, we start to enjoy it, and we think more is better. And, and, uh, and sometimes that does work, you know. In other words, if you're going to run faster, you got to run fast more often, and eventually you get faster as a runner. Uh, there's a little bit of that's true, but, but you need structure. In other words, you need to understand the fundamentals of training. You know, you need to really reaffirm that stress and rest is what produces great results. Uh, when we start people in a learn to run program, we start them with a walk run combinations and the walk run combinations allows them to go further, faster, and they stay injury free. As we progress through the program, we need to remind people that even if they're running at the marathon level, they still, still need the fundamentals. They need to truly understand that you know, they need a portion of strength training. They need a portion of endurance training. They need a portion of speed training. And it culminates on race day when you put all that together. But the, the thing that keeps that together is, is rest and recovery. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's like the athletes that cheated using drugs. I mean, the drugs they used was to enhance their recovery time. We can improve recovery times if we intelligently approach our training and include a rest factor within that. And I think that's what we try to preach to, to people, too, is that, you know, you want to stress, you want to rest, you want to get stronger. You want to keep it fun so that you keep highly motivated. You want to keep it social so that you keep it highly motivated. And if you do all those things, you're going to see yourself progress and be successful as a runner. If you put too much work into speed work, uh, you're going to get yourself injured. You know, we know that uh, speed kills. Speed is a killer to our training program because it, it uh, too much of it, you need to do it in small doses and you need to do it intensely. Uh, and you'll see yourself improve as an athlete. The same as endurance. You know, it's getting people ready to run a marathon or half marathon. Half the battle is getting them to slow down and slow their long runs down so that they, they build that endurance. And then when we ask them to do the strength training of running hills or speed training of running intervals, they're prepared for it because they've got that endurance base that they've built up over the period of time. So I think approaching it with an intelligent science-based background, but putting it into plain, simple, clear language. Like a, a lot of people, if you talk to them about, gave them the scientific facts on, on our training program, they glaze over and fall asleep and be laughed of interest. But if you break it down into fundamentals like endurance, strength, and speed, that, that we can all relate to that. And, and that, that makes sense. So that it's, it's based on science too. Right. Yeah, such important reminders. Um, you know, for folks who are maybe taking up uh, Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon as their first virtual event, um, or again, even folks who have been running for a long time, and again, just need that reminder, what are some of your best pieces of advice for tackling your next virtual race? How can you feel really successful doing that? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's like a, approaching running at the beginning level. And it's like approaching running at the intermediate level or it's approaching running as a veteran and, and experienced and elite level. It, it's, uh, you wanna make sure that you keep it gentle, keep it progressive and keep it fun. Those three things I think are, are what's vitally important. You wanna keep it gentle so that you don't get yourself injured. You wanna keep your targets realistic. You want to be progressive. In other words, you don't want it so gentle that it's a wimpy program you're not seeing any improvement in. You got to challenge yourself, but you got to challenge yourself intelligently. You know, and a good rule of thumb is about 10% per week in either endurance or intensity. And if you gradually build yourself up using that, that as a guide, that's a good guide to do. The other thing is keep it fun. And, and fun is defined by how you approach your training. Fun can be, you know, you're heavily involved. You're maybe a nurse or a doctor working in the health care facility right now, which is under tremendous stress. And if you're there, you may enjoy the solitude of a, a solid run, you know, and just going for a run in the quiet and, and reflective time that you get from that. Or you may be working at, at the check-in counter at, at uh, Air Canada <laughs> and, and you, you want to get away and, and, and uh, just in, enjoy the solitude. 
or you may be working at a computer all day long and not have any social interaction and enjoy getting together with a buddy or two and going for that run and motivating each other. So define fun by your definition of fun, not my definition, not your, your buddy's definition, but your definition of fun. What makes it enjoyable? What makes it it's something that you look forward to, you know, I mean, I know on Sunday when I was going down on Sunday to do long run some Sunday mornings, you know, particularly here in Alberta, when you're driving down on a Sunday morning and it's 40 below you, you know, you're questioning your sanity. Like, what am I doing? Why am I going down to meet this group on Sunday? Do I really need to do this? But, you know, on the return home, you're sort of like, I'm so glad I did. I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed the workout. I enjoyed the camaraderie of the people. So, you know, you want to define what, what you see as fun. And, and the nice part about what we offer today is we offer a, a kind of a, a, a plate of, of options for you to do that. You can do it virtually. You can do it in person. You know, some people are looking forward to getting back to the in-person events. Other people are paranoid about doing an in-person event. So define where your, your situation is. If you're paranoid about doing an in-person event, then the virtual is a great opportunity for you. If you've had it with virtual and, and you know, you're, you're tired of doing everything on the computer and you need to have that social interaction, there are some in-person events that, that are being done in a safe way and make sure that you verify that everything is in order and, and then you can, you can choose between the two and find your comfort level. Yeah, absolutely. Those are great points. I know I, uh, you know, I've, I've been a runner for most of my life and I really love meeting up with groups and I've always worked well in a team and um, so I've, I've missed some of that over the pandemic, but I, I must say, I also have really enjoyed getting out for these solo runs and exploring my city on foot. And yeah. I've explored corners of the city that I had never been to before. And I thought, why have I always just gone the same route with the same group of people? <laughs> like, it, it's really nice in some ways to have that opportunity, like you said, to, to be a little... Um, you know, do things a little more solo and, and enjoy that sort of that solace just of, of being by yourself, but also getting out and exploring wherever you live on foot. I feel like that's been a real, a real gift during this time as well. Well, it is. And it's adventure, you know, and, and you can visit a new city or if you're traveling at all, you know, it's an opportunity to see parts of the city you wouldn't. I mean, I, I traveled before COVID. I mean, I, I traveled 200 days a year. I was in a different city and, and at a race or at a store or doing something. And I'd be in anywhere from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria or Nanaimo, BC. And, and you'd go to events and, and what have you, but you, then you'd go for your own run. And that's the part that I enjoyed is just the exploring. You'd see parts of the city that you'd never see as a tourist. You never see there on the business, but but you get to explore them and you find out where where the, the locals live and where they eat and where they have coffee or a pint of beer or whatever it is that they're enjoying, so. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's, it's a great thing. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. Still toggling that mute button on and off. Again, we, we were saying before we got started, it doesn't matter how many months we spend online, we still always have uh, little issues. <laughs> well, John, just as we start to wrap up here, you know, again, you've been in the industry for a long time. Uh, you've seen, I'm sure, a lot of different challenges over the years. You know, this certainly, this might be a unique one, but it's not the first time that, that uh, our community has pr been presented with a challenge. But, you know, after such an exhausting and difficult year, I'm wondering what it is that gets you motivated and excited about the future of our sport and our industry and what we can maybe start being, you know, cautiously start looking forward to. Well, I think the excitement is the, the new people that are coming to our sport. I think there's, a, you know, running had had a boom and then it, it, it kind of fell back into that hardcore runner. And I say hardcore runner, not meaning the elite runner where you were at, at the elite level. The elite runner, uh, goes all the way down to that beginner runner, the person that's running 5Ks as, as their race target, the person that's running 10Ks. In other words, it's that committed runner who is there and there's a committed group of people, but it, but it kind of had the same group of people. What I'm excited about now is the influx of new people, the newbies that are coming, and it's a variety. You know, in Canada, we, we're, we're, we're blessed with a multicultural uh, community. And we see it in a city like Toronto, where you have the multicultural, cultural, uh, racial backgrounds of everybody. And we all, for the most part, get along, you know, and that's what I enjoy about Canada. 
And with running, I think we're seeing that influx into running. We're seeing a group of people from all backgrounds, people who never considered running before are now looking at it. People who took group fitness classes, who know the benefits of fitness, but now are a little cautious about doing the group fitness activity. And like you are looking at that solo run saying, that's an option for me. And now they want to challenge themselves and they want to continue to be improved and they want to improve themselves. You're looking at people who never exercised at all, looking in the neighborhood, seeing people out there, or their significant other has dragged their butts out of the door and said, come on, you're going for a walk and we're going to start jogging. And, and they started a little bit of an exercise program and they're new to running. So I think we it's exciting in that way that I, I see across that, that there's a whole more defined emphasis on fitness in Canada right now. That COVID has taught us that fitness is an individual thing. Fitness is an individual responsibility and it's an individual uh, reaction that's necessary in order to become athletic. And becoming athletic doesn't mean that you're gonna go to the Olympics. Being athletic for some people may be that you regularly run three to five times a week and, or, or you walk, you know, walking is still underrated. And, you know, we saw it in recent years at road races is that the 5K, you know, it, it, uh, it always broke me up sometimes the 5K race, you know, they talk about the 5K race when 80% of the people in the 5K were walkers. You know, it, it wasn't runners, it was the walkers that were driving a lot of that. So, and walkers were, a lot of them were coming to it because they were runners who could no longer run, but wanted to continue the, the benefits of, of running. Or they were people who, uh, for health reasons, just had no capabilities of running because of a health injury of some sort. Or there were people who just had no interest in running. <laughs> they just enjoyed walking. And they discovered that, you know, you and I, you go for a 5K run and I go for a 5K walk. The benefits are almost identical, other than you get a little more cardiovascular benefit from it. But the calorie burn is almost the same. The, the, and, you know, for most people, they start a running or walking program. It's for weight loss. So if you're doing it for weight loss, if you're doing it to, to motivate yourself just to get in better shape, walking is also a good choice. And as runners, we don't want to neglect that walking group because they're, they're future runners or they're, there may be runners who have now become walkers. Absolutely. Great reminder. Thanks so much for that, John. Well, whether you're new to walking and running or you have been a long time runner, you can, of course, visit runningroom.com slash CA to get all of those uh, tools and tips and tricks about how you can approach your next race or just your next run or walk um, in the best way possible. You can also follow the running room on social media. John Stanton, thank you so much for joining us today. And we wish you and the running room the best in the future. Thanks, Kate. Look forward to seeing you and all the runners back at the events in the future. Absolutely. Cheers. Okay.